Hello, my name is Oliver Ingram and today I am joined by writer and actor Mark Gatiss. It is a pleasure to have you here. Thanks, Oliver. So you said in uh, previous interviews uh, that you knew you wanted to write and act from a young age. Um, could you discuss some of your early influences? Uh, television was a great friend to me when I was a child. Uh, I mean, I just watched everything. So by doing that, I kind of absorbed so many things. And then I, I read voraciously, and uh, so there's a lot of stuff from, from uh, Dickens' particular favourite as it, when I was a kid, and it's just sort of a big mixture of stuff, you know? Throughout your career, you've had a, you know, your love of horror has been a constant source for your creativity. That's why I'm here. <laughs> um, so why do you think the genre continues to be so popular today? Uh, horror, I think, uh, in a very simple way, it's it's a, such a primal thing. Um, they're always they're the, the the cheapest movies you can make to to make a profit on. That's why people always do them because they tend to make money horror films. Uh, because frightening people is a great thrill, and secondly, and not much talked about, they're great date movies. And I think that's one of the reasons they've always persisted. It's a great way of getting close to somebody. Um, you've recently been working on an adaptation of Bram Stoker's Dracula. What inspired you to revisit such a classic character and story? It was a, it was a strange process, uh, not unlike the one that led to Sherlock. Uh, we were actually making the third series of Sherlock and we were only two days into filming and I had a picture on my phone of Benedict silhouetted against Mrs Hudson's door with his collar up. And we went to an awards ceremony and I, showed, I just showed it to the then head of drama he looks like Dracula, doesn't he? And he said, do you want to do it? <laughs> no, it wasn't as easy as that. Because, you know, we didn't, we've not spent the last sort of six years plotting it, but that was the seed of it. And it's just sort of cooked away, really. And it's not part of a big plan to cross off all the great icons of literature. But there is a, there's just, obviously, it's a great joy as a, as a horror fan of lifelong standing to, to get the chance to have a go at Dracula. And also very challenging because there are, there are lots of things in adapting the novel that every adapter faces, you know, which largely that Dracula's hardly in the book. So if you're going to try and make it a series about Dracula, you have to sort of rethink it. Dracula, of course, sees you reunite with frequent collaborator Stephen Moffat, who you famously worked with on both Doctor Who and Sherlock. Um, what would you say are some of the benefits, and even challenges maybe, when collaborating with other writers? That's a very good question. It's a, writing can be very lonely and there's a great joy in simply turning up to work with someone else. Uh, the bit I like the best is sort of, um, to use an American term, spitballing. Sort of throwing ideas about. I love that. We, that's, we have a lot of fun doing that. Especially in the early stages of anything. You're just kind of going, well, you know, this is my favourite Sherlock Holmes story. Should we try and do that? And or I like this bit of that, or you know, and that is really good fun. And you do there's something happens, I think, when in any collaboration where you, it's just so different to be on your own. I, I can't tell you the amount of times I've been stuck on something, and particularly if I ring up Stephen or other members of the League of Gentlemen or something like that. You, almost in the process of doing it, you go, no, I I can't. I'm just totally stuck on. Oh, <laughs> almost the moment you actually speak to someone, it starts to do something. Uh, and, and, and then or they can just come in and solve your problems or, or vice versa, you know. So it's a great joy. Um, the downside, I suppose, is, that, is you just don't get to do exactly what you want to do because <laughs> it becomes suddenly a democracy, which is a dreadful idea. But, um, but you know, the, 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 uh, the pros definitely outweigh the cons. <laughs> Sticking with, um, you know, your love of Doctor Who... Um, what was it like <coughs> to get the opportunity not only to star in several episodes but to also write for the series? Oh well, wow. amazing! The best Christmas present I ever got. It. I got a phone call from Russell T Davis just before Christmas, two thousand and three, uh, and that, you know, asking me if I'd write the Charles Dickens episode for the first series of the, the first season of the new reboot. And uh, yeah, I mean. Um, it was. I never thought it would happen. I mean, I, I, I didn't think Doctor Who would come back. It was a sort of, 
I thought we'd reached a sort of end point. It's an, it's an interesting it's an interesting question though because there are there's something about there is a danger of course in, in doing the thing you've always wanted to do and getting that close to the thing you've always loved is that it won't be the same or you'll sort of, sort of spoil it you know but it, it genuinely wasn't like that the thing it's hard work and it, writing Doctor Who is a particularly difficult thing it's actually it's interesting how over the years a lot of people who you would think would be natural fits tend not to be it's 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 quite a particular kind of melodrama and so there's a lot of hard work involved but I, I honestly even after all these years I've never lost the love of it and to be a part of that ongoing story is, a, is a, such a privilege as a screenwriter myself um, I would just love to know what your process is like how do you begin when you like, have that blank page in front of you for me I work best um, in the morning and also in longer periods uh, I can do more in one good day than I can in little fragments in a week, if you know what I mean. But that's about getting into the zone and about the muse being with you and all that. But if it's working, I, I'll stay at my desk from nine till six straight through if it's working. And other days, you just, as you know, you just think, it's not, it's the point, I might as well not bother today. But Philip Pullman always says, you know, even if you rescue one word from that, There'll always be something in there, even if you think it's a pile of rubbish. <laughs> um, but I don't think, to each their own, you know, every, there, is, there are manuals about this sort of thing, but everybody in the end finds, you have to find what works for you. Um, so I'll try and get one more question in. We do have one minute left. Oh, um, so I want to touch upon The League of Gentlemen. It was originally a radio show, then became a TV series, a film, and even a touring stage show. Um, as an actor, is there any particular medium you prefer to work in? Filming's great because you can have another go, but then stage work, it's an old cliche, but it brings its own rewards because it's different every night. And, and the, an audience brings it a live quality to it, which is absolutely, you can't get anywhere else. You know, Sometimes it's frustrating because the show which went brilliantly the night before is okay the next night. So I, I, I wouldn't say I have a favorite, but I've done, obviously I've done more filming than stage but I do like to do stage and it's it gives you a shot in the arm it makes you remember what it's like to be alive because it's utterly terrifying